What's up guys, it's Matt Collins Jones here, also known as the D365 Geek, and today we are talking about Power Automate and the CDS current environment trigger of when a record is created, updated, or deleted. And we're going to look at filtering attributes inside of that trigger. Now, I want to do a separate video for this because it is a little bit complicated. It's not as straightforward as the documentation would lead you to believe, um, surprisingly. Um, there is a few caveats that you need to be aware of, and that's why I want to go through that today. So, I am in Power Automate here, and I have my CDS current environment uh, flow, which is inside a solution, and we're using the trigger um, for that um, for that connection, which is when a record is created, updated, or deleted. Now, here we have a filtering attributes um, list here. So it says, comma separated list of attributes. The trigger fires if at least one of these attributes is modified. So what this means is that it'll run through and it will check to see if something is being modified uh, from the list that you put in here. Now, this list is actually the schema name of the field itself. It's not the label, it's not the display name, it is the schema name for that, um, for that record or for that field that you want to trigger it on. So if I go to accounts, um, what I've got here is these are all label names. So if you're familiar with customizing dynamics, you have a field name, you have a, sorry, you have a schema name, you have a display name and you have a label name. Um, so this is the label name, usually the label name and the display name are the same. Um, and then there is a schema name as well, which is what it's written to in the background. Now there is a quick and easy way to find out the schema name. Um, you can either go into your solutions, find your um, entity, find your field, and then look at the schema name through there. However, there is a fantastic community tool called Level Up. Um, I will link it in the description below as well as the person that created it. Um, it is a fantastic tool uh, and it allows you to do so much uh, with it. So it's a Chrome add-in, so it works for Chrome. It also works for Chromium Edge as well, if you are a Chromium Edge user. But it gets added into your um, Chrome, and then you can click on it while inside Dynamics, and you get a list of actions. Um, it's a fantastic tool. I recommend any developer, any consultant, any system admin install this tool so you can have a play around with it. And one of the things that it does is it has an option for logical names. So if you click on logical name, what it does is next to each name, it tells you the logical name for that field. So it tells me that um, fax is called fax, website is actually called website URL, parent account is called parent account ID, etc., etc. So I can, I can use this tool to easily and quickly find out the logical name of something, and this is something that I do all the time. So in this instance, um, I could um, have this trigger on an account number uh, and maybe telephone one, uh, but maybe not on fax or maybe not on any other records, any other things. So um, I will copy account number and we'll put this into the filtering attributes and then we'll come back and we'll copy telephone one as well. And we'll add that into here. So add a comma uh, and then I'll go back to this and I'll just clear those logical names there. Right, so first thing to be aware of is that it's the schema name, not the label name. So don't um, don't be caught out with that. Secondly, they are comma separated. However, you cannot have spaces. If you have a space like I've got here, it will never trigger. It will just not work. So do not have spaces inside your um, inside your attributes that you're listing. And also, I have found another issue where it won't trigger unless you put a comma at the end of it as well. So the end of the last attribute, you have to add another comma so that it knows that that's the that's the end of the attribute. Um, I'm not entirely convinced that's not a bug, but um, it's currently the way it works. So um, in this instance, um, I've got no spaces, I've got commas separating the attributes, and I've got a comma at the end um, to stop it, um, stop it, so I think just it's just containing inside this, uh, in, inside between these commas anyway, and that's the way it works. So no spaces, commas, and a comma at the end, um, and schema names. So. That's the first thing to be aware of. So if I uh, go to test this now, 
um, and I say I'll perform the trigger action, I know if I if I update either account number or telephone one, this flow will trigger. So we'll click on test. Um, and that's going to take a second to start. But I'm going to go over to my Dynamics record and I'm not going to update account number and I'm not going to update phone. Instead, I'm going to update fax. So if I type nine into there and hit save and go back to my record, you can see that it's still waiting. It's not run yet, it's still waiting for my input. So that's what, what we know. Now if I go to account number for instance and add a two to the end of that and hit save, that is an attribute that should have been that should be picked up and we can now see the flow is running uh, and we can see it's finished. So if I open this, I can see in the body that account number there has been populated and is working. So it's updated with that too. So previously when I updated the fax, it was 9911. Um, when I updated the account number to say two at the end, the flow is then triggered and is then worked. So to recap, filtering attributes is a really handy thing because it means that your flows won't fire all of the time. You may want to only have it fire when certain things are updated. Um, and this and filtering attributes allows you to do that. It allows you to check to see whether those things have triggered, uh, those things have changed. Now you can't check to see whether they've changed to a certain value. Um, you can actually put that in the, in the filter expression or you could use a control and a condition to do that. This is just checking to see whether that field has changed or not. So. Schema names, commas, no spaces, comma at the end, uh, and all everyone install level up. So I hope this video was useful to you. Uh, let me know if you've had problems with this uh, in the past. I know this is one that some people have had a problem with, uh, especially when you add in, in multiple attributes. So let me know in the comments down below um, if this has helped. I always like hearing um, when these videos prove useful to people. If you've uh, if you found this video useful, please do like it and please share it with your friends. Uh, it is always appreciated. It really helps me with this channel. Uh, if you've not already, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and I'll see you next time.